It was in the early 40s, Port of Milk was formed, they had left off to the airport, lay south of the main runway, and they were planting potatoes on an Easter weekend, and uh, the pilots were training, and they had a bit of an overshoot in the runway, and uh, the plane landed in among the potato drills. But thankfully there was nobody hurt, everybody got out okay, and uh, they took the plane apart after that, and brought her back up to the airport in pieces. Now you'll have gathered that by our opening shots we're dealing with memories from the wartime. This little story sparked off because I was over with my neighbour a couple of fields away, Samuel McKee, who's now in his 80s, and Samuel was telling me about his wartime memories. He was a little fella during the war years at home from school because he had the measles. So, and he's going to uh, explain and reveal his memories of the wartime, of the opening of the quarry, of all the goings on around the farm, some of the air crashes and some of the incidents which took place and that will divert us off on another trail to follow up on those little stories as we go along. So this may take three or four parts, I'm not quite sure how it's going to run, but anyway it's featured and centred all around Samuel McKee's farm and the quarry and the goings on. Uh, now, the wartime brought fortune for some. If you had a quarry, it was a good thing because you got paid for the stone. Um, misfortune and loss as well. So we'll be covering little aspects of all that story. Now, today I'm in the field of a neighbour. And it's a couple of fields south from, from my little farm. And on it is one of the... This field that I'm standing in here at the minute was an, a mass of Air Force buildings, canteens, uh, squash courts, you name it, everything that people need, a, a village in, uh, in miniature. So uh, one of the buildings on here is an old house and it's one of the last standing ones round on this, it's the only one standing on this farm now because it's all been cleared away and put back to agricultural use. Now I have just consulted my wartime map and it tells me that this was this field was commune number three. I was number two up on my little farm so this is number three and the number of this site on the map is 185 and that is a generator house that if the power went off there's a, a jetter, generator automatically kicked in. So let's have a little look. Let's take a look inside. And it's used for agricultural purposes now, but there we have where our donkey engine sat there to drive the generator. And up above we have a steel beam, that would have been for lifting and winching your engine and parts back and forward. One big door. So these buildings were all constructed of brick and then they were put uh, a coat of plaster over them. And there's the roadway running down into the site, or one of the roadways. So these were all constructed from rock and much of it was drawn from Samuel's quarry and not only Samuel's but other local quarries as well. Now at the top of this field was our favourite building number 172 and it was actually a huge water tower built on H irons. It stood about 75 feet tall from memory we dropped the wee line and measured it. And as you can see from the photograph here, there's two boys coming with their heads up of the inside of it. It held 20,000 gallons. And just in behind us there, you see a building in the field. That building is the commissioned officer's quarters. We're just sitting in the home of Samuel McKee here, and we were just talking about wartime things. And as it is, Samuel's farm here has a quarry on it, and that quarry supplied a lot of the stone 
which was going to the building. There was other quarries as well, obviously, but it was supplying a lot of the stone locally going to Ballet Halbert Aerodrome. Uh, so you were working, brought up on the farm here with your father. So how did the quarry actually get established, or if, if you know that? Uh, well, <coughs> George Gregg and sons from Larne, mm -hmm. and they, I don't know how they got to know about it, whether they were looking at maps or what they were doing, but uh, they came here and they, they surveyed uh, a bank there that was covered with whims. Yeah. And uh, they decided that whether they took a, a sample of the stone and found it was good blue stone, uh, I don't know, but they, they came here and uh, started to cut the winds off the, the bank and made a road down into where the quarry face would start. You remember all this happening and yes. it was done by hand I take it, it yes. wasn't no machinery? I, I can remember <coughs> at that time, <coughs> I wasn't at school for, I had measles <laughs> and I watched the men digging out the, the road down into the quarry yeah. from the end of the farm lane yes. and uh, they uh, dug, dug the road and stoned it and then they started to strip the soil off the rock yeah. and uh, <coughs> then they started into quarry. And, and was that blasting them straight away or was I, that? Well, they had, to, they had to strip the soil off first and that was all done by hand. Yeah. And uh, it was... Drawn. And was there tractors and trailers or was no, it lorries? Or? No, there was no lorries. It was, it was horses and carts that my father supplied to them. Right. That drew that, that uh, soil to fields round about the farmyard. And it was tipped up low deep mm -hmm. and then they, they just leveled the top of that and then it was played right. and I can remember a playman, horse playman saying that they never touched the sod when they were ploughing because there was so much soil on top, put, put yeah. on the fields yeah. and uh, <coughs> then they started um, to blast and, and uh, prepare for to sell stones to the aerodromes right which were uh, either what was known as rubble it would be it would be four inch down and the, then there was pictures these were stones you could lift with your hand yeah. maybe a stone weight or so yeah and uh, they they what they did to make the run was those runways were all hand pitched. Yes. Those stones were stood in the rain and hand pitched yep. before concrete was poured onto them yeah. or tarmac, whatever uh, was necessary. Then they <coughs> they started in to to draw uh, break stones with 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 a with a. A stone breaker. Yeah. I'm just picturing looking out the window here. I'm looking at actually at the quarry out this front window of the house. But what how many roughly people was there? Was there half a dozen or two dozen or oh, was there like a crew with picks and shovels and George George Gregg and Sons <coughs> had fifty I think it was fifty three men working in that quarry. Right. And where did they stay? Did they have caravans with them? or? No, some of those people rode the bicycles from Malay right. in the morning. Yeah. And uh, there have been a. So they a, weren't all from Larne, they were, they were employed local as well? Oh, well, there's a lot of local people. Right. And a lot of uh, farm labourers left the farms and went there because they were getting twice the money. Right from from George Gregg and getting on the farms, which left the farms very scarce of labour. Right, it would have. Yeah, uh, I, I can remember 
Uh, my father had horses and carts working in the quarry. Yep. And uh, they were drawn. They drew the, 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 what was known as pictures. Yeah. To the, to the, to the top of the, the breaker. There was a ramp up to the breaker, and they turned the horse round and tipped the load up. And then right. there was a man feeding the breaker. Right. So but there was, there was two or three men down below. Uh, whenever the, uh, the breaker broke the stones, they went into a big roller. And there was different sizes of holes in that roller. Yeah, well, like a mesh. Yeah. Uh, and the, the inch and a half come out there, and the three quarter come out here, right along. and yeah. the half inch come out here. Yeah. So they were all sh had to be shoveled back manually. Right, and so then it's hand shoveled it uh, back into what? It was this drawn being drawn straight to the aerodrome at this point? Well, they had to. They had, had to stop pilot, I suppose. They had to stop pilot. And then when the lorries came in, they they decided. I don't know whether the lorry man knew what he was to take, or whether George Gregg and sons had a contract with them. But one would take pictures, one would take rubble, which was yeah. known about four inch down. Yeah. And the others would take. Uh, <coughs> take these inch and a half yeah. and some would take three quarter. Yeah. So so right that so that was was that day and night night shift at all during the war because of the pressure to get things built or was Well there was at one time in the summertime they worked to nine o'clock at night. Right. Mm -hmm. And I take it it was an early start? Oh seven o'clock in the right. morning. Yeah. And there was men rode their bicycles from Malaile to be here at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So that was a mm -hmm. that would be a day's work <coughs> excuse uh, me on its own. Uh, and uh, <laughs> if it was bad weather. Uh, and of course uh, they had no way of making tea or anything and the mother yeah she had to boil these huge kettles of water at lunchtime and there'd be a queue up at the old farmhouse uh, and they had their tea I can remember the tea and sugar was in the can, yeah. And mother poured the, the boiling water into the can, and they went out and they swung it round their head a few times, <laughs> and away they went down to the quarry to have their lunch. There you are. Uh, so the old things were simple in those days. Uh, well, it was all it was all manual work. Now, folks, that's us almost at the end of part one of wartime reflections from Glastry. So part two is next Friday and there's some interesting things lined up in it. So I want to take you up the road a few miles to a place and now as soon as you see the first photograph you're going to know where this is and it's never going to go out of your mind. <laughs> so uh, this is a rescue of an old machine from wartime. Over to Robert. This crusher was uh, rescued from a quarry in Bally Eastborough about 40 years ago and was used during the war to produce stones for airfields at Bally Halbert and Kirkeston. And we got it uh, up and running again about a year ago. This machine uh, would have been driven by belts from a steam engine at the period of the war and it turned the flywheel and then the jaw worked after from the other side of that in and out and the, this plate on the, the platform at the back was where a man would stand to feed it by hand all manual labor well up here we have the platform where the operator would stand and feed the stones into the crusher box up here where the jaws are going in and out and as the stones would drop down they would get finer and come out the bottom into a wee chute from that into the, the rotary screen which is turned by a belt from the other side and as it goes round and round 
the stones come down here and the different grades drop out and the bigger bits keep on going down until eventually if it's any too big they go off the very end and then they would have to be shoveled out by hand it was sitting up in stools which meant there was more ground clearance uh, when it was in operation but it, and, and might have i think maybe there was we uh, and divider walls between each screen then it would have had to have been shoveled out by hand onto transport for to move from that to the airfields.